through the centuries, to leave Earth was an impossible fantasy. Then two rival scientists became locked in a race to realize that dream. Their struggle would make history. Fire! At the end of World War II, Russia and America raced to capture the secrets of Germany's rocket technology. Who's the brains behind all this? Werner von Braun was a rocket genius years ahead of his time. When he surrendered to the Americans, he brought with him his dreams for space. We had other rockets at the theoretical stage. In time, other rockets will leave Earth orbit altogether and explore other planets. But von Braun's vision had come at a price. Were you ever a member of the National Socialist Party? Yes, I was. And the SS? Yes, I held the rank of Major. Slave labor was used to construct von Braun's rockets. You were aware of the existence of the V2 mass production plant? You saw the conditions. Don't you imagine someone else would have done the work if I had refused? Unknown to von Braun, the Soviets had a space visionary of their own. Your confession. Sergei Koryalov was sentenced to 10 years in the Gulag for crimes he did not commit. Once released, he became the chief designer of Russia's rocket program and was so successful that his very existence was hidden from the West. In the interests of state security, no one must know your identity. It must be as if you don't exist. After the Second World War, an iron curtain fell across the ruins of Europe, separating the communist East from the capitalist West. Two superpowers, America and the Soviet Union, became locked in a new arms race. The Cold War began as each side feared a preemptive nuclear strike by the other. In 1952, the Americans tested the most powerful weapon the world had ever seen, the hydrogen bomb. The year is now 1953. On the 12th of August, the Soviets also explode an H-bomb. The race is on for nuclear supremacy. Congratulations, comrades. Good job, well done. May all such future devices explode as successfully. He's here, the person. The H-bomb test leads to a momentous meeting for Sergei Koryalov, the Soviet's chief rocket designer. Good morning, Comrade Marshal. What an unexpected surprise. Please. Koryalov's military paymasters set him the challenge of a lifetime. Five tons. You're proposing a five-ton warhead. That's what our physicists are telling us that the next generation of hydrogen bomb will win. The Defense Ministry has looked into aircraft as a delivery system. But we've concluded that aircraft are too slow and too easily targeted. What we need is a rocket that can deliver it over a distance of 8,000 kilometers, capable of reaching America. And in this way, safeguard ourselves against our enemies. With respect, the Ministry does understand that there is nothing currently under development that has anything like that capability. Obviously. So the question is a simple one. Can it be done? Of course, Colonel. Right. Koryalov hopes that by meeting the military's need, 
he will be able to fulfill his long-held ambition to journey into space. The first step will be to launch a satellite to orbit the Earth. Then manned spaceflight will follow. But on the other side of the world, in America, Koryolov knows he has a rival. What he doesn't know is that his rival faces a crisis. Restricted by the US Army to develop only small, short-range rockets, Werner von Braun's ambitions are crushed. Victory is stable, gyros functioning normally. Von Braun has brought his team from Germany, hoping to pursue a space program. The bridge is clear. Good. We have hours of data collection ahead of us. Let's uh, grab a short break. Besides, I have some news to pass on to you. But their employers, the US Army, have sidelined him. Are they serious? We're simply not a priority at the moment. They want the funds elsewhere. Nonetheless, I remain convinced. They will see sense eventually. We'll get our shot. They're cutting back our funds even for military missiles. How are you going to convince them that we should launch a satellite? I don't see any evidence that they even want a space program. Until von Braun's team get a chance to build a bigger rocket, they have no hope of launching a satellite. You women have heard of the and you've heard the noise they make, but let me introduce my new rocket 88. Yes, it's straight, just one way. Everybody likes my rocket 88. We are losing some of our best people. Money in the private sector is a powerful lure to an engineer with the right expertise. I don't know what else to try. The military just don't, don't see the significance. The only people who have shown any interest in space are in Walt Disney's studio. Maybe that's the answer. Sell the idea direct to the American public. Show them there's more to it than missiles. Show them space as America's new frontier. Von Braun doesn't know he has a rival in the Soviet Union. We're going to need a radically new approach. To send five times the weight over 15 times the range, we need twice the velocity, 20 times the energy of our biggest rocket. For Koryolov and his deputy, Vasily Mishin, the new rocket will stretch science to breaking point. You know something, Vasily? The rocket will have to be nearly half the size of that building over there. Fully convinced of this. Hold your nerve, Vasily. And remember, when we have it built, we would finally be able to launch a satellite. Of course, you know who we'd have to work with. Hmm. Glushko. To have a chance of success, Koryolov first has to enlist the help of the Soviet's leading rocket engine designer. One of the very men who had denounced him during Stalin's purges, Valentin Glushko. Very Jews world. To carry such a weight, such a distance, we need to get radical. Well, I'm all in favor of that, but you'll never get one engine to carry a five-ton warhead. But what if we use several engines, firing together to share the load? But there's no telling on the impact of one engine on another. It's never been tried. Well, that's a challenge for you, Valentin. What I propose is four clusters of main engines strapped to the main body of the rocket. Once they've accelerated the rocket to sufficient speed, the clusters drop away, shedding the dead weight, allowing the central core to continue at a faster velocity. Look, I 
need your help with these engines. All right, it is ambitious. But if we combine our forces, we just might make history. It's a huge gamble. But if they succeed, they will have the means to get to space. The engines will be my department, and mine alone. All right, I'll do it.